Good morning, Buenos Aires. Good morning, Apiva. Good morning, dear colleagues from the beautiful city of Cambridge, which I now call home. Before I begin, I would like to thank Apiva for giving me the opportunity to uh, speak to you, albeit virtually. So, what would I like to talk about today? Well, I would like us to look at the idea of unleashing the power of Argentinian ELT talent in the world, because I strongly believe we've got lots. As I only have 15 minutes to talk to you, I've divided my talk into two main parts. In the first section, I would like us to reflect on the factors that could be holding us back. And I think this is important because unless we become aware of what could be holding us back from unleashing that talent, it is very difficult to address those. The second part, I would like us to explore what individuals, organisations and teaching associations can do or do more of to unleash Argentinian ELT talent for the world. So, let's get started. I would like to briefly ex explore three factors that, in my opinion, could be holding us back from unleashing local ELT talent. The first factor is extreme busyness. Now, I work with teachers from all over the world and of course extreme business is a universal feature of the teaching profession. However, having lived and worked in Buenos Aires, I am fully aware that in Buenos Aires extreme business is something else. It's a different level of business and this has to do with the professor taxi thing. The fact that we have to go from here to there to everywhere to make ends meet. What is the impact of El Profesor Taxi style? or lifestyle, if you like. Now, I think we may uh, run the risk of thinking short term only. So getting through my next lesson and the one after that, and if I'm lucky, tomorrow's lesson, and who can blame us? The impact, if you like, is that we may end up developing professional survival thinking, which can cause career tunnel vision. You know, my career is a succession of lessons to plan, lessons to teach, papers to mark. And in the hectic bus busyness of our working life, you know, we may end up having all our creative energy sucked into that kind of vortex. We have very little time to think, very little time to develop our ideas and to find our own voice and to think of ourselves developing our professional identities and selves beyond the classroom. So we have very little time or no time to entertain the idea that our job is not just about teaching students or teaching teachers. Um, but we may end up forgetting that uh, as members of a professional community, we also have a responsibility and a contribution to make to our colleagues and to the wider ELT field, even to the, at the international arena level. We think of all this as a luxury, but luxury colleagues, it is not. It is essential if we don't play our part in the construction of an innovative and creative professional community, our own work suffers. We dry up, we lose motivation, we lack the challenges that keep us fresh and renew our professional practice. But more importantly, the next generation of teachers and teacher educators suffers as well because they lack inspirational models. The second factor I would like to speak about is what I call the nothing to say syndrome. Uh, this lack of awareness that we may have something important to say to our fellow colleagues. And this is often, in my experience, a factor that paralyzes the most brilliant and outstanding teachers and teacher educators the most. When I ask my really great colleagues why they don't put themselves forward um, to do a talk at an international conference or to write an article for a professional magazine or journal, I've had countless of times I have nothing of substance to say or I have nothing new to say. Now, it's very important to realise and to understand that what's not new to me and what's obvious to me may in fact be not obvious at all to other colleagues and radically new and transformative. So do not underestimate your potential contribution to the field. I have been taught, I have worked very closely and now I manage some of ELT's best known authors and conference speakers and teacher educators and you would be surprised by how normal and even ordinary they are. 
They have no superior, extraordinary knowledge or expertise. They're just very good teachers like you and me, or teacher educators, who at some point in their careers have felt they had something to say and they stood up and said it. And they made a name for ourselves because they said it or they wrote it. So I want, I want to encourage you to do the same. The third and final factor I want to speak about is the lack of support from the system. Now, at the moment, I understand that if a teacher educator working in some of the profesorados in Buenos Aires wants to put themselves forward and, for example, put a conference proposal together to speak at an international conference and gets accepted, unless they find funding from a scholarship, uh, they have absolutely no financial support or funding from their organizations, either in terms of helping help with paying their conference fees or their travel costs or their accommodation costs or even their subsistence costs. But what I find even more disturbing, because I can, I can understand the issue of not having funds, but what I find even more disturbing is the fact that in some cases, some professorados discount the day that these colleagues go and present at international conferences from their salaries. This is really very, very short-sighted in my opinion, because these colleagues are not just learning and becoming refreshed, you know, um, for themselves, but they are likely to bring the, you know, the fruit of that learning back into the classroom, into their own organization. But more importantly, they also are ambassadors and representatives of those organizations in the international world arena. So this is something that I think we need to get better at. So let's move on to the second part of my talk, which is what individuals, organizations and associations can do. So first, I would like to focus on what teachers can do. The first thing that I suggest is that you record any random and mad thoughts and ideas that you may have. In my case, the most original thoughts that I ever have happen either in the shower or when I'm doing something totally unconnected with work, like making dinner. And normally, of course, they're quite random. So there's a danger of wanting to dismiss those thoughts or just, just forget all about them. So it's really important to record any random out there thoughts as soon as you can. I normally have a notepad in my bedroom, another one in my kitchen for those very moments. And remember that random thoughts all come together and fall into place later. Once you have those ideas, it's important to test them with a colleague, a colleague whose judgment you trust, somebody who will be honest and constructive with you. So questions I normally ask my colleagues is, you know, is there any mileage in this idea that I have? Is it worth saying? And if it is worth saying, to whom? Is it for novice teachers, more experienced teachers, teacher educators, academic managers? Is it for my local context, for my national context, or for, or does this have a broader appeal to a global international context? And what kind, what format do these ideas or should these ideas take? Is this talk, workshop material, or is it written material? You know, an article, a journal article, a blog post, a white paper? But it's important to listen to your colleagues' feedback and to use it to refine, polish and edit your ideas. If you decide to go down the road of, you know, putting together a talk or a workshop, it's really important to rehearse your talk in front of others. I found this the most illuminating and useful exercise. And this is not just to troubleshoot anything that can go wrong before the final cut, if you like, but it, more importantly is to get useful feedback that can only make your talk and your materials even better. So it is important to seek feedback not just on the content of your talk, but also on the delivery of your talk, where, is, which, where I think we're sort of blind at. Once you run your ideas and your presentation past your colleagues, it's also really important to rehearse by yourself. And here is where you refine two things. First of all, you get your timing right. There's nothing more unprofessional than a presenter just running through the final slides or just not doing them because they run out of time. So this is your opportunity 
to actually time your presentation to perfection to understand which bits they you know we need to get rid of etc but also this is your opportunity to become fluent to get you to know your content better and to be more confident and also comfortable and fluent in your delivery this is a really important thing and finally if you decide to write a piece it's really important that you get feedback on your writing and when i say this i don't just mean run it past one colleague no um, last year for example i co-wrote a paper for cambridge university press with scott thornbury and at least we we looked at each other's uh, writing at least three times but also our editor gave it to seven other readers to read our work so i'm talking about at least five readers reading your work to make it even better. And I was talking about extreme busyness. If you are extremely busy, like I sometimes are, which I can't, you know, sometimes I don't have time to accommodate the talks that I'm presenting or the article that I'm writing during my busy work schedule, make sure you do it little and often. The way I do it is I get up early for a limited period of time, so an hour every day before my normal waking up time, and I work that hour on my talk or my article. It really does work for me. Finally, what can organizations do? And by organizations, I mean initial teacher education providers, profesorados, language schools, and teaching associations. Well, the first thing that I think is really important for us to realize is that more and more role models are needed. Let's think of how many published authors come from Buenos Aires, how many teacher educators from Buenos Aires have published authors, how many of them are regular speakers at international conferences. I bump into the same three or five at every conference I go. So how can new talent grow and develop with few inspirational role models who are experienced and can act as credible mentors? Now, this is not an individual issue, this is a systemic issue, and this is why it's so important for staff at Profesorados and um, teaching associations to come together and unite to campaign to address the systematic lack of support by raising their awareness, by advocating, etc. As I said, it may not be possible to fully fund um, a professional to go abroad and deliver a talk at a conference, but the least a profesorado can do is not to discount the salary, you know, the, the days that that professional goes away, and maybe pulling funding together, crowdfunding. Another thing that um, associations and organizations can do is to set up mentoring schemes putting together volunteer exp volunteers who are, you know, uh, professional, um, you know, well-known conference speakers and published authors with new talent so that they can get the feedback and the opportunities to practice that they need. But also important is to focus more on teachers as knowledge creators and not just consumers of knowledge. And this can only be done through a more sustained focus on teacher research and creating teacher research schemes. So we have seen, for example, associations like APIVA doing initiatives fundamental initiatives, and, and you should be very proud of yourselves, like, for example, co-organizing and co-sponsoring the International Festival of Teacher Research in ELT that happened last May. But also, you know, profesorados can help more by creating more opportunities for trainees to plan, conduct and evaluate experiments as part of their coursework. But also individual schools and school chains can do more in the CPD programs to develop this. So, for example, in my school, we have a CPD choice strand where teachers decide the topic and the focus of the research, the approach and dissemination channels with support from colleagues. So here are some examples, a colleague doing action research, being published and speaking at a conference, other colleagues, um, you know, again, with doing supported experiments, presenting at conferences and being published by a modern English teacher. A colleague who recently gave a talk at the International Association of Teachers of English as a Foreign Language was interviewed because her experiment and her talk was so, so good. Finally, celebrate talent and innovation. Why not set up an award to celebrate and, you know, to, to give people the chance to showcase and be proud of 
their experiments and their innovation. Some ideas, I hope you have found this useful. Thank you very much and goodbye colleagues. <laughs>